In this video, we're going to be talking about the Kodai rhythm syllables. And this is a system that Kodai used in his music education. Uh, it's not really something he came up with himself. They're actually derived from a man named Kerwin. And he's the one that kind of created this system. But Kodai certainly implemented it in his, his music education practices. And so today we just consider it Kodai because he's the one that really promoted it more than anybody else. All right, this is a really good way of teaching rhythm to children. If you really want them to learn how to read music and understand how rhythms work in music, um, I've had success using this with first graders and all the way up through 12th graders. Uh, my first time teaching high school choir, I had a bunch of kids that had never read music before and there was a bunch of books with this system with exercises in it and I made them learn that and they were tested on it. And I'll tell you, they learned rhythm so much faster than any of my band students that I've taught ever have. Um, so keep in mind that practice makes perfect and you have to do a lot of practice with this, um, but there's just something about these syllables that make this a little bit easier to understand. Now, in today's teaching world, this is a little old-fashioned. Uh, we have other ways of doing these things now, but I don't really like the new ways that people are using. Uh, one of the, the big ideas in today's society as far as teaching rhythm to children um, has to do with putting familiar names of, let's say, fruits or something to different types of rhythms. And so, saying apple, 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 pineapple, 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 pear, 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 and those types of things. But the problem I have with that is, is as you start intermingling different words uh, with these rhythms, students can forget where the beat is and how the beat has to be precise within those words. And that's what I like about these syllables, is it really helps you focus on the beat. And so students kind of get that beat ingrained in their head and it helps them keep the beat and keep steady in their music. Otherwise, you know, with all the fruits and things, sometimes uh, you just don't have a, a steadiness to the system. And I, I've seen students that are products of using the fruit and vegetable system and none of them keep very steady beats when they're doing rhythms. Yeah, they can kind of say rhythms with their fruits, but it just doesn't work very well. So I would really recommend using this system. Um, obviously, mixing systems can be fine as long as you have enough time for it to work, but probably the best thing is to just focus on one. So let's talk a little bit about these Kodai rhythm syllables. Uh, let's talk about the basic note values first. So we have our whole note, and the syllables that we use for the whole note are ta, a, a, a. And I have to tell you, there's a lot of different versions of these Kodai syllables out there. Um, this is the set that I've used in my teaching, and I really like it. It's a little bit different, and in some aspects quite a bit different than what I've seen with other teaching methods. Um, and even the ones that I put online are different than these. But these are the ones that I like. So when you do your assignment for this, um, you, you're welcome to use this, obviously, because that's how I'm teaching you. But if you want to use the ones that are on, on Blackboard, that's fine also. I'm not going to mark you off for using a different set. But um, I just feel like this works the best for students to understand how the rhythms work together. So that's why I do this one still. All right, so when we see a whole note in music, we're going to say ta, ah, 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 and you want to keep the sound going. You don't want to go ta, ah, 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 because a whole note is constant through those four beats. And we put a, a hard consonant at the beginning of that note to tell us that that is the beginning, and then everything else is just vowels, so we continue, continue vocalizing on each one of those beats. Ta, ah, ah, ah. Okay, so let's just practice doing a, a, a few whole notes in a row together. Join me, please. Ta, ah, 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 ta, ah, 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 ta, ah, 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 and so forth. Works really easy. All right, a half note gets two beats. So basically, we'll just chop in half what we did for the whole notes. So we have ta, ah. Uh, let's do several of those in a row. Ta, ah, ta, ah, ta, ah, ta, ah. So you notice that when you hear that hard consonant sound, the t sound, 
that's the beginning of the note. And the ahs are just the continuous sound as we continue on. Quarter note, uh, our basic note value here. And again, this is in the time signature of 4-4. Four, four. That's why these are all those, those note values. Um, just gets a ta. Okay, so ta, 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 telling us that every beat is going to have a new note. Okay, now eighth notes, and in today's society you have to be a little careful with this. Um, and I'll tell you, when I taught high school choir and we're working with these things, the students thought this was really silly and funny. But make sure that you say T, T and not titty or titty or something like that, because then they can cause problems. Um, but if you don't make them aware of that problem and just use the syllables T, T, you should be fine, okay? So remember our eighth notes, there's two of these in the same time or duration as one quarter note. So if I'm going a quarter note pace, ta, 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 that means these have to be going twice as fast. T, 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 ta, 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 T, 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 T. And see how exact that can be? And again, the consonant, the hard consonant, is the beginning of the note value. Okay? Now, to differentiate between our eighth notes and our sixteenth notes, which are twice as fast, we're going to have to use a different consonant sound. Otherwise, it's just going to be confusing. So here, basically, the T is the first eighth note, and the T here is the third. So there's our eighth notes if it were like this, but we're adding another note in the middle of those, which are the keys. So tiki 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 tiki. So just for fun, let's go quarter note, two eighth notes, four sixteenth notes like this. Ta ti ti tiki tiki ta ti ti tiki tiki ta ti ti tiki tiki. And you can see how you can keep the beat just very constant and steady within these rhythms, okay? Now, our rests, it's exactly the same, except for the rests, what we're going to do is instead of using a hard consonant, we're going to use something soft. And in this case, it works really well just going shh, mm, 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 okay? And that helps us to know that it's soft or silent for the rests. So a whole note, or sorry, a whole rest gets shh, mm, mm, mm. And again, you want to try and keep the sound going throughout that to know that it, the, the whole value is continuing, but it's not so important with rests because it's just silence, okay? Half rest, again, cut it in half, shh, mm, and a quarter rest is shh. Now, I haven't seen a lot of teachers out there that have gone beyond these rest values. Um, I have seen some where they'll use for an eighth rest, and let me go ahead and write this up here. To kind of match the T, we're going to say she for that. So that works, but I've never gone into rhythms far enough to have to deal with eighth rests. And again, you know, what are you going to do for 16th rests? That's just a little too difficult. And by that time, they should just be reading the notes and playing instruments or doing something else with them. So don't worry too much about the really advanced rests. Now, the tricky ones are when we start adding dots to notes. A uh, dotted half note that gets three beats. Uh, it's fairly easy. We just have ta-ah-ah because we've taken one beat off from our whole note. So that's fine. But as we get into the, the dotted quarters and dotted eighths, hopefully you can read this, that's a dotted, sorry, dotted quarter and dotted eighth note there, we have to change things a little bit to make that work. So our dotted quarter note, what we have is a quarter note, which is ta, and then we've got to do something for the dot. And because for our eighth notes we're using the E syllable, we're going to kind of chop that in half because it's not a new note, so we'll just use an eighth note type thing, but without the consonant. So this is going to be ta e t ta e t, but the e is just showing us the beat. It's not showing us a new note. Ta e t ta e t ta e t ta. 
So I'm saying the beat there, but I'm not clapping that because the rhythm isn't happening. So the rhythm's gonna sound like this. When I add the syllables to it. And I love this system. If your students get this ingrained in their head, they will never miss that rhythm again because it helps them feel that beat right there. Whereas most musicians don't feel that beat very often. So excellent way to teach them this. Now if we chop this in half and have a dotted eighth followed by a sixteenth note, it's basically the same thing. Uh, we have our eighth note, which is T, and then a sixteenth note without the consonant, which is the dot. So T, and then the sixteenth note, which is key. So it's the same rhythm, it's just half half the amount of time or twice as fast. So T E T T E T T E T T E T T E T T or T E T T E T T E T T E T T. Okay? And I'll tell you, these are amazing ways to teach students those difficult rhythms. Uh, we do have some other ones we can use. Uh, for example, if I see a triplet in music, and this isn't very common, but what you'll have is you'll have three eighth notes with a little three and they're all hooked together. And that means that those three eighth notes have to happen in the same amount of time that two usually happen. Um, and there's a lot of different ways of doing this. I'm just going to show you this as an example of another variation, but I'm not even going to tell you what that is. It's on, it's on your list of syllables. So there's a lot of different patterns to learn, and it can get pretty complex pretty quickly. Let me just do a simple rhythm here, and then I'm going to erase this and put something on the board, and we're going to write the syllables under it and then say it. So if I have, for an example, an eighth note followed by a quarter note, and we'll make this a little more complex, we'll have two eighth notes and another quarter note, okay? Well, that's not right, I'm gonna have something else. <laughs> we'll put another eighth note there and get rid of this quarter note. Okay, so my eighth note, one of them is just going to be T. My quarter note is TA. Another eighth note, T. Two more eighth notes, T, T. Okay? All right. Now, you've got to remember your note values and that a quarter note is twice as long as an eighth note in this case. That's the only way this works. Okay? So this one's going to be twice as long as all the rest of these. T ta t t t. T ta t t t. So you notice how this is the long one, and that's why we use that ah syllable, because it's easier to be long on ah than it is on e. So t ta t t t. Okay? So there's an example. Now you're going to have an assignment. Um, in Blackboard where you have to take a piece of music and write in all the syllables underneath it. That's not going to be very hard because all you got to do is do this. Okay, There are some tricky ones, there are some dotted notes and some eighth notes in there. I don't believe I have any sixteenth notes on that page. So write all that in, but I would really like you to practice it too. Don't just write in the syllables, write them in and talk yourself through it. See if you can do some of those rhythms using this and obviously you can access this video for some help but let's do one right now i'm going to turn the video off and erase and then write okay so here's our example on the board uh fairly simple music we get a little bit more complex there at the end uh, but should be pretty easy and rhythm syllables i didn't say this in the other in the other portion of this video but you can start this with young students first grade uh, second grade, but getting into this advanced stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that till probably third grade. You could start doing that. All right, so we have a whole note. If you remember, we say ta a a a, and I have to write that kind of small to fit it all in there. 
half notes, just half of that, ta, ah, quarter note is ta, quarter note is ta, and then we have our two eighth notes, which are t, t, ta. What kind of rest is this? Is it a hat on top or a hole under the ground? It's a hat on top, so it's a half rest. So we're going to say shh, mm. Then we'll get a little tricky here. Eighth note gets T, quarter note gets ta, eighth note gets T. Now, here's our dotted quarter. That's a dot. It's hard to write dots of chalk. So we go ta for a quarter note, E for our dot, T for our eighth note, and then ta, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Ah, okay. Let's say it. Ta a a a ta a ta ta ti ti ta sh m ti ta ti ta i ti ta a a a. That's pretty fast. Let's slow it down a little bit. Okay, do it with me, please. Ta a a a ta a ta ta. Ti ti ta sh m ti ta ti ta i ti ta a a a. This time let's clap the rhythm as we do it. So you're clapping just on the consonants, okay? When there's a rest, we don't do anything, right? Let's do it. Ta a a a ta a ta ta ti ti ta sh m. Now you can see that I've created with my syllables a perfect rhythm. That's pretty cool. All right. Now, because I want you looking at the notes and not the syllables, and this is our goal, is to get to the point where we don't have to write in the syllables. We can just look at the notes and know what the syllables are. Ta a a a ta a ta ta ti ti ta sh m ti ta ti ta i ti ta a a a. And now I can just clap this and think that in my head. And I can clap the perfect rhythm. Okay? Or I could sing it. La 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 la. So you can see the advantage of using these syllables. They're a really good teaching tool because rhythm is the absolute hardest thing for students to comprehend and learn. So if you take the time to work through this stuff, if you want your students to learn rhythm, the syllables is the best way, I promise. So have fun on your assignment, get that done and turned in, and go ahead and use um, either this video to help fill those out, or if you want to use the... the